I am a first time entrepreneur, not from the US. I did not, I still don't have any technical knowledge. I can't write a single line of code. So everything was pretty much against me. So I, and I remember at that time, um, going to investors with my pitch and my, um, you know, PowerPoint slides. And of course, all of them would say, yep, sounds great, but what's your, you know, unique um, competitive advantage over this idea? Why can't anyone's sister or friend just, just launch this? And I then said to them, hey, I'm going to prove to you that this is something that works. So what I then did was um, used the $8,000 that I had in my bank, um, hired a team of developers based in India, um, based in Delhi, and built the first version of my website from scratch. Um, so then in a few months, um, I was able to launch the site with very little money uh, without having to give away a ton of equity to investors. Um, and um, slowly, I saw the site grew, um, grow. So it, um, we had 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 users. And at that time, I then knew that there's really something um, about this idea and this product. And once we had, of course, um, more traction, I was able to do two things. One, of course, attract um, investors. And then secondly, and more importantly, also attract good talent for, for the company. It's not something that happens instantly. Um, it took me a full year. Um, but when the time came around when I really had that golden idea, all the time that I had invested into my network paid off huge. Um, and uh, I met my, uh, you know, I met my investors uh, through, you know, people I had met through doing other things. Um, and the second thing I did was I just tried to put myself in situations that, um, you know, were going to put me in the path of cool and new ideas. So. Um, you know, I was doing consulting uh, to keep, you know, uh, you know, fresh ideas in my mind. But the other thing I helped start was called Beta House, which is a co-working space in Central Square for one or two uh, person uh, tech teams that are starting something new. Um, at a given time, there's probably six or seven ideas going on there. And just hanging out there for a couple weeks, you come across 100, 200 different ideas that you talk about. So I think if you do those two things, you know, it's, you know, invest a lot of time in your network. and. Make sure you're putting yourself in the path of, of cool and new ideas. You know, something will eventually hit. Well, for me, when I got, you know, back in 98, the decision was go here in Chicago, which is definitely not an option. So it was either turn left or turn right out the front door. Um, I turned left, I guess it'd be left to the East Coast, mostly because I was doing something in the supply chain space, which is enterprise software. My contacts that I had were there that I knew I could convince some people to help me get this off the ground. So. I kind of went where my network was, and then you're here. You know, I think the bot, so that was it for me, and for supply chain and for mobile, you can do some really good things here. I think it's a different question, and it's a fair question in the consumer space. Um, you know, I think my kind of view on the situation is, we, it's the consumer space, and especially around things around young people, we have more young people in the city than anyone nine months of the year. So it's just a matter of managing, tapping, and uh, attracting that talent. And you know, it's going to take a couple successes of s singles or doubles even to get people excited and motivated. Mm -hmm. And I think more importantly, and I'll just wrap up on this, is the game changed. You know, the cost of comp it's so easy now to get something started, and it costs so little money that um, I think it's just about getting the idea off the ground and then keeping them there and doing things like. I think Matt can talk about it more than anyone being incubated by some of these VCs that think about it. So I don't think we're ever going to compete with Silicon Valley at that level, but I think there's a lot that can be done to incubate the ideas at the universities and some of the VCs with some of the younger partners who can see that. But you know, from the Facebook economy, from the iPhone platform, these tool, the, the cost of entry now to be a young entrepreneur and to get something out the door is far less to reach the consumer market. So there's opportunities, but it, I, I do believe it's an uphill battle. Something I do is I run an event called Pop Sigma, which is uh, um, it's just a casual social event for tech people. We've done a couple of them both times. We've sold out around 600 tickets in under 24 hours. But the biggest thing that I notice, and the biggest th difference between Boston and San Fran, is the involvement of uh, the students in the area. Yeah. It's almost non-existent here compared to San Fran, and that's ridiculous because there are so many good colleges here, so many more better, much talent and, and intelligence here 
among the college than, than there is in San Fran. In San Fran, you got Berkeley and Stanford. Here we got MIT, Harvard, Northeastern, BU, BC, and the list goes on. And and you know you go to the tech network events out in San Fran, and all those all the Stanford and Berkeley people are there. You go to the big ones out here like Pop Signal or WebInno or Open Coffee. I barely meet anybody, and if and if it is, it's usually Harvard MBAs. And the people I really want to meet, and the, uh, the people, all the other entrepreneurs want to meet, are the engineers, the creative people, the science guys. Design. And you can't find it. It's really difficult. And we tried to do it with Pop Signal. We basically said we set up an event at a bar. We offered free uh, open bar with premium liquor and food. <laughs> what other incentives do you guys want to come out to this thing, right? And. Uh, um, and, uh, and, and you know, it, we, we still had trouble getting a lot of college students here. So I think we got a lot of work to do in that area. I think events like that and talking like, about this stuff is like this is great. And, uh, and uh, there's some room to grow. So I think there are certainly certain industries where being in, um, in the East Coast and in Boston in particular um, provides you with an advantage. Education is certainly um, one of those industries, mobile, um, like Evan mentioned earlier, is another one. Um, financial space um, is another one. Healthcare is certainly another um, industry that where it makes it makes much more sense to to be based here, even though you're in the consumer internet space, um, than being um, based in in the West Coast. It's really access to to talent that all of these guys have alluded to before. Um, again, because I I've spent some time here, I built my network here and got to know people here, built a team here, which is which was of course a lot tougher to transport once the company was up and running. Um, and, and finally, for, for my happy planet specifically, which may not apply um, generally, it's really um, proximity to a lot of the education companies that, um, that we wanted to establish partnerships with. We were going to move out to Los Angeles, which was you know, the second biggest sort of jewelry hub in, in the nation. And, my partner had contacts there uh, in, in the jewelry side of the business. Then, you know, when we hooked up with Highland and they gave us the offer of uh, staying and in, in incubating there, it's something we really couldn't refuse. You know, we had a great relationship with Bob Davis that uh, you know, started off positive and remained positive and became a great advisor. I know for me, the second reason aside from the investors was an advisory ne network. I know. Um, as a young entrepreneur, um, I'm absolutely maniacal about networking and more importantly, uh, finding advisors and great advisors. And in fact, I maybe take it too seriously in that, you know, I, I think to do this well, you know, an entrepreneur doesn't know all the answers, but they know when they don't know the answer and they know who to talk to to find the answer. And that's something that building that network while I was at Babson and then once, you know, we got into the VC community and Highland was able to make a lot of introductions, you know, that, um, that expanded. I think staying here in Boston, we've had um, great luck hiring great talent. I think we've been fortunate that we have uh, a great VC behind us uh, that, that helps make some introductions and provide a little bit of leverage. Uh, but for me, uh, something that goes on the area with the students is, is a big issue is I feel like you know we tend to focus on the same schools and we know who they are. and. Um, it, it leaves a lot of people out of the picture. And I know even at Babson, a place which is you know, diehard focused on entrepreneurship, we didn't know about Beta House. We didn't know about you know, different events that were going down. And then the second layer for me was um, to take it down even, there's a lot of really talented undergrads. And I know at least at Babson, a lot of times there's a lot of focus on the, the MBA students and a ton of talent there. And a ton of great people that come out of there and great companies that come out of there. But you know, there's a lot of undergrads who I think are overlooked. Um, and I, I think it's as simple as more events like this at more campuses. And I think if there was collaboration between campuses, you know, one central listing spot where local CEOs and local founders can, you know, explain maybe once every other quarter they do an event in a classroom. And you know what, the students that want to get involved are going to be there. And it's, you know, selfishly, we found, uh, we found three very high caliber young people who joined our team in intern capacities and at least one of them will join full time, and the contributions they make are huge, and nobody else gives them a chance. Um, so I think collaboration between universities can be huge so we can spread out to a, a bigger base of people.